In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Streamlit's new chat elements. We will be implementing streaming responses. We're going to be implementing a token count limit on our conversation history. So earlier messages drop based on a max token count. I'm going to ask it to tell me a joke and we are almost at the token count. Another one. And here we go. And our token count went back to 31 because I've set the token limit to 50. Now, if he asks, what is my name, it should have forgotten because that message would have dropped. And as you see, the OpenAI is currently actually very busy, so we are having difficulty getting responses. That's why we are actually going to take a look at setting request timeout and also using Tenacity to retry, to retry our requests in the case of failure. So instead of error messages, hopefully we'll just wait to be able to get a response from the API. So oh, here we go. We did end up getting a response and it says it doesn't remember my name because that message was dropped due to the token max token count limit. So Streamlit just very recently introduced this chat elements by a way of chat message. There are not really any examples of it. I couldn't find any examples online either. And then there's the chat input. But I worked quite hard at it to get this thing working with streaming responses, like I said, with token count, with message history, and also the message history which respects max memory tokens. In this case, it's 50 for demonstration purposes, but you can set it to 500, 5,000, uh, given the model that you're using, maybe 2,000. And when you reach this token count, then earlier messages will be dropped until the token count is less than the max memory tokens. Let's review the code and see how it all works. But before doing that, I just want to mention the Kawaii AI Academy that I created with 140 plus free coding videos, such as the one you're watching right now. You can search all my videos, find their descriptions, find the code download links at echohive.live. Link will be in the description. Also, this code will be available at my Patreon for my Patreon supporters, along with 100 plus code files for other projects. Take a look if you're interested. Link will be in the description. Requirements, requirements for this project is OpenAI, Streamlit, Tick Token, and Tenacity in requirements.txt file. And we are importing them top of our file. And we set a title in orange color, new Streamlit chat elements. Let me zoom in. And then we initialize session states. I initialized three different session states. I could have maybe done it differently, but this is the way I thought of it. I initialize user messages. If it doesn't exist, session state is necessary in Streamlit because the script with each action of the page rerun. So we have to store the things we want to persist in a session state, such as a conversation history, the things that we want to keep over one, inter one interaction of the Streamlit app to another. Another thing we are keeping track of is the assistant messages, and we're keeping track of the overall message history in the way that we are going to be using it to send uh, the messages to our call with GPT 3.5 Turbo in this case. Then we define a function to count tokens. The encoding is set to tick token encoding for GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then we just return the length of the text, which is an input for this function. Then we set a maximum token limit. Here in this case, we set it to 2000. Like I said originally, I had set it to 50 to demonstrate, but we'll leave it at 2000. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. You feel free to set it anything you like. And we're using tenacity retry. In this case, we're doing a fixed try, but you can also try exponential. Read their documentation. It's actually pretty useful. So what's going to happen is that we are using this decorator for tenacity and for this function, the GPT call, in which we are actually going to make our API call. If, in any, if for any reason this function returns an error, then tenacity is going to wait two seconds and then retry up to five times after which point we'll actually end up getting an error. That's why we probably have to implement another try and catch block as well, which I haven't done. Anyway, so we get a response, right? We set streaming to true. I set a request time out of 30 seconds. So each try will take 30 seconds unless we get an error. For some reason, if the API is hung up, then it'll wait for 30 seconds and then it'll quit. I believe in which case the tenacity should kick in. Yep. So then we, our messages is retrieved from the st.session state message history, which we are setting right up here. Okay. And then this is just to get a response from when the streaming is not true. I just left it there. 
And then we uh, define an assistant response to an empty uh, string. Then we, for chunk in response, since this is streaming responses, we check for content in chunk choices, zero element delta. Then we get the R text from the content element of the delta. Then we append it to the assistant's response, that chunk, that token. And then we are actually passing this place, placeholder prompt and the placeholder to our GPT call. Uh, placeholder is defined right here. We're going to uh, take a look at it real quick. It's just defined as an st.empty. Then we're using the new element chat underscore message. We set it to assistant and we with markdown, we write the assistant response. We do have to say unsafe allow HTML true. Then we also return the assistant response. So the printing of the assistant message happens right here. This is the streaming response that is happening. Okay, so there's some more complications to this, but we're going to get there. So this is our function, right? And then we define our prompt is the chat input say something. You can only define this one time in your in your app. And if we take a look at our app, let me refresh it. This is this right here is the chat input. It's very much a chat GPT input box. So you can just say hi and you just enter and then it starts the process. So then we get the prompt and we check we, we check to make sure that we do have a we do have a prompt that some user has answered something. Then we append to the user messages in session state that prompt. And then we append to the message history the role user with the content prompt, right? This is our message history that we are going to be using to make calls to API. And then uh, we set the prompt to the session's user messages, negative one. I just did it this way. Maybe there's a better way. I could have just assigned it right away. Essentially, I, I'm taking the last message in the user message since we're appending it and saying that is our prompt. So I just wanted to mention when we are defining the session state, we already begin with our system message. In this case, just that you are a helpful assistant. And when the user enters the prompt, we append to that the user role with the prompt. And then we count how many user messages we have, okay, currently. Because, see, our user messages and our assistant messages are not going to be in parity. We are almost always going to have one more user message when we're trying to print this. So that was a big bit of a problem for me to solve. Maybe you can come up with a better way. Let me know in the comments. So I count the total user messages. Then I do a for loop over that amount. Then I print every user message. I'm going to print it one by one with sd.chat message right. Here we go. And then I check if the total user message is negative, if i, right, is less than the length of the list, minus one. And then I print all the assistant messages up to that point because the assistant is going to be one less than the user, right? Because User message we have immediately after the prompt, but we don't have the assistant message until we make the call and get a response from the GPT. So then I print everything like this. So this was my solution to it. But then we still have to print the new assistant message. Then my solution was to check, okay, when we are at the very end of the loop, right? Uh, and we don't have an assistant message. Now we have to get an assistant message. There I set a placeholder response to st.empty because we're going to actually fill this in and then each time we're going to empty it. So that's why we set it right here. And then we say st.session state assistant message that append and then we make the call to GPT. This is our function with the prompt and the placeholder response. Okay. So we're sending the prompt and the placeholder response calling that function. And as you saw here, when we make that call prompt, actually we don't even really need the prompt. We don't need the prompt anymore. I guess I could just delete that. Just like that. I had made some changes, so I had forgotten. That's fine. Our messages is the session state directly, which we are appending to, right? So anyway, when we make this call right here with the placeholder, then we are giving it to the current message history. Then we are receiving our response. As we are receiving our response, we use the placeholder to print it. This is the way I could figure out to print in its streaming responses. After which time we return the assistant response. And when we return it right here, we are automatically appending it to the assistant response. Okay. And then 
since we are keeping track of three different session states, one user, one assistant, and one entire message history, we also append to the message history with the role assistant content being the assistant, the last assistant message, right? Because we have appended our calls response to assistant message. Now we want to append that to message history. So we initialize it with role being assistant content being the last assistant message, which we have appended to right here. And we calculate the total tokens in the conversation history, sum of all messages in messages three session state. And then we check if total tokens more than memory tokens and if the length of the session history is more than two because our first message is actually at the system message we remove the message which is the first element so we don't want to remove the system message right that will be the zeroth element we pop the first second element essentially zero and one so one being the second element from the beginning and then we do a total token talk we equate the to token count to minus equals whatever that remote messages content tokens was and then we do this while loop again make sure we are still over the memory tokens we pop the next message otherwise if we are good with this check our total tokens is no longer larger than next memory tokens then we break this loop and right here i'm just printing it you can comment this out obviously this is just for information purposes then I'm just simply printing the session state to terminal here. Just for my information purposes, you can comment this out as well. I hope this wasn't too confusing. Anyway, just review the code. Code will be available at Patreon, but this is just the way I figured it out. It wasn't very easy, but this works. I'll quickly just scroll through the code if you want to take a look. The confusing part is that just remember I'm keeping track of three different session states, one for user message, one for assistant messages, and for one for the message history. Okay. And I'm trying to like juggle these three things to get it working because it wasn't really straightforward. And you can do a search and as of currently, there is really no good documentation on this and the stream with documentation doesn't really tell you much. So I hope you found this useful. Let's actually run it again because it's actually the way it runs is very pretty cool. Let's run this again. We can say hi right there. How are you? I'm just gonna probably say it doesn't have feelings. Tell me a story. And then it's just gonna tell us a story about a magical forest. But the cool thing is it's streaming responses. That's awesome. And also the token count, keeping of the token count is interesting. You should never really have to worry about going over your token limits. And since we set the max token to 2000, it should be good. Just say bye bye, goodbye, and see we are still adding to the tokens up until the 2000 mark. Because in our code, we had set that to max tokens 2000. Anyway, like I said, please check out my Echo Highway AI Academy. I actually made this a little trailer. I'll play it right after this. It has some. Music, the music might be loud for you, just be prepared. It should be playing right after this. Take care and see you in the next video.